don't know, this is here Liz Thompson. Hi. Uh, she works with doTERRA and she's a wealth of knowledge. Um, and I am here to just kind of learn from her because I use these things in my, in my office here. Uh, we, I don't know if you guys meant, n noticed all the mm -hmm. beautiful smells that we have in here. Mm -hmm. It's, that's, voila, Liz. <laughs> and what else? Um, I use it at the house and uh, it, it, at my own house and I love it. So here's Thank Liz you. Thompson. That's it. Give it up for her. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Well, my doTERRA journey with essential oils began about four and a half to five years ago. At that time, my daughter, who I think was three at the time, had something called molluscum contagium. Does anyone know what that is, or has, has anyone heard of it? Neither had I, <laughs> but apparently it's very common among children. And I think the contagium part of molluscum contagium, if I'm saying it correctly, means it's very contagious, and kids pass it around to each other. And it's these unsightly bumps on the skin, and they would spread on each other. And I would, I had started a natural journey, not with essential oils yet. And so I'd go to the health food store and I'd spend money on this and I'd spend money on that. And I didn't know it would work. And this issue just kept spreading. So one day I had commented on someone's post on Facebook. I'd been hear hearing about essential oils, but I honestly thought that sounds nice, but I'm already using natural remedies and they're probably expensive. That was what I thought. But I still commented on this amazing post and a friend of mine sent me some little teeny tiny essential oil sample bottles. And one was oregano. Now oregano is a hot oil, so I wouldn't necessarily recommend doing what I did, but at that time I didn't, I was just diving in head first without really knowing anything. And I decided oregano is strong, I'm gonna try this on my daughter's skin. Thankfully I did know enough to dilute it, so I did dilute it with a carrier oil. Now she had been struggling with this for months and nothing was doing anything. In fact, it just kept spreading. So I started dabbing this diluted oregano on her spots. I'm so sorry. Hi, Hi welcome. <laughs> Thank you, sorry I'm late. No, you're fine. There's a chair right here. There's one right there. And let me give you all the stuff. Yeah, I think I can get there. Sorry, my grandson wouldn't let me leave. No, oh, that <laughs> sweet boy. <laughs> His daddy should have gone home. See? <laughs> <laughs> So I started dabbing this diluted oregano on the spots. Within two days, they had all scabbed over. By the end of the week, it was just that, um, you know those little, just like regular skin, but a little pink still. And then it completely went away forever, never to return. Now, when I had done research online, if I had gone to the doctor's office, usually they don't have anything to give you for this. They just say, wait it out, it'll take about two years to resolve. And I had addressed this in a week's time. So that was the point for me that I was sold. I, I recognized the power of these little bottles, that they worked, and I started using them in my home. And so we've been using them ever since. So that's how my journey started. And now I'm gonna take you guys through this little presentation. Sorry, it's kind of like riding on a roller coaster, so <laughs> <laughs> hold on to your hats and glasses. So when we want to address an issue, we kind of have two choices, right? We've got modern medicine and we've got nature's medicine. So let's just go down the path for a minute of modern medicine. Modern medicine will address our symptoms, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. For the most part, usually yeah. we'll pop a pill, it'll kind of deal with what we want to deal with. But what happens when we pop a pill day after day to deal with something? Right. It affects your kidneys, other things, you there's these side effects, right? So, I'm gonna switch over to a different slide for just a moment. Oh, 
Over 60% of prescription and over-the-counter drugs and medications contain synthetic modifications of, or copies of natural compounds that are derived from botanicals. So a lot of what we are taking that's synthetic is actually stolen from something that was originally in nature. So we already know the side effects. We can watch any drug, drug commercial and kind of know what we're getting. Know what we're getting. Right. But in nature, um, all of these chemical constituents work together synthetically, and our body knows what to do with them. But with modern medicine, something will be taken out, a molecule will be taken out, synthesized, copied or cloned, and sort of like amplified. And it sort of forces the body to do what we want it to do, but at the expense of other things. And that's why we get these side effects. So our body has to, it has to respond to these synthetic agents, but then it's at the expense of something else. Let's click back out of here and go back over here. So what are some of your favorite side effects that you've heard on a drug commercial? Death. Death, that's a good one. <laughs> Oh, That's a stroke. big one. Mm -hmm. uh, vomiting. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Diarrhea. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Uncontrolled <laughs> diarrhea. Yes. Oh, yes. gosh. Oh, my gosh. And there's so much money. $4.5 trillion spent on global health care which is enough money to send half of all Americans to school for the rest of their lives. And one dollar in every six dollars is spent um, goes to health care in the United States. So what if they're, oh, we also spend money on adverse drug reactions. And the number of deaths from prescription drugs is now more than deaths caused by car accidents. Wow. And are we healthier because of it? So what if there was a better way, at least for a lot of the things we struggle with? Because sometimes, obviously, we need Western medicine. If I'm in a car accident, please don't give me an essential oil. Just take me to the hospital. <laughs> you, know? yeah. you can give me the essential oil to smell along the way, but <laughs> take me to the hospital. right? But what if, for some of these problems, we could address it with natural solutions? So like I said, um, nature's, the way that essential oils work, each essential oil has multiple, multiple hundreds of different chemicals within each essential oil. And they work together synergistically. And they each have um, different things that they do within the body. So they're, ma they're made from hundreds of natural compounds found in plants that enhance physical and emotional health. They both minimize the symptoms, but they also address the root cause. And that's what we really want to do. We want to get to that root cause. Now, when you use an essential oil, your body knows what to do with it. Your body will prioritize what to do with the essential oil. So it's safe, and without those side effects, there's no drug commercial for the essential oil telling you you're going to die if you take it. Thank God. Um, you also don't have to spend that much. So when I used that oregano on my daughter, I probably spent a couple of dollars maximum. Because a bottle of oregano, I believe, is around $30. Don't quote me on that. That's 250 drops worth. I diluted maybe 10 drops worth. I don't think I even used all 10 drops. So the mathematician in here is welcome to figure out how much I actually spent, but it was not very much. And I didn't go to the doctor. I didn't pay a copay. I didn't wait in the waiting room to be seen for an hour with my screaming babies and and another, right, another, I was just able to handle this one on my own. And that's not always true for everything, but for some things, can we handle them at home on our own? Yeah. Or can we go see Dr. Singer? Yeah. <laughs> also, that you can use for cooking. That's true. Yep. So. How much would you put in a pot of spaghetti? You would, so, so little. You would take your toothpick, 
you would stick it in the oregano bottle and you would stir it with a toothpick the, and that's the, uh, plenty yeah okay. lots of pots <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So here's, here's a good example of how strong they are. You would have to drink 28 cups of peppermint tea to get the same therapeutic benefit of just one drop of peppermint oil. So they're incredibly powerful. This is an amplified, uh, magnified peppermint leaf. You can see the essential oil sac right there, that white blob. So that's where the essential oils are held. Now, let's see if the next slide shows what I wanted. We're gonna skip that for a minute. Okay, so look down where it says the plant's own natural medicine cabinet. So what do essential oils actually do for a plant? Well, a plant, if it's being attacked by a predator, let's say somebody wants to munch and nibble on it, it can't uproot and walk away. It's going to omit these essential oils, these volatile organic compounds, these scents, to try to deter from predators or to draw pollinators. Or it's like, it's like the plant's immune system. It uses it to heal if it's been chomped on or cut. It also uses the essential oil against bacteria and viruses and parasites that are coming against it. So this is the plant's immune system. And thankfully, our bodies also respond to the essential oils because we are also natural. Um, they, like I said, they're 50 to 70 times more powerful than herbs. They, many of them inhibit the growth of bacteria and viruses. And if you'll notice, um, viruses will live inside of a cell. And our, our bodies don't just let any, any old thing into the cells. In fact, if you have a virus, what does your doctor normally say to you? Nothing. No. Can't do anything. Right, because not, not much is going to penetrate into a cell. Our bodies won't let that happen. But essential oils can cross into our cells. They can handle viruses, and they can help us heal from the inside out. Mm -hmm. And they're especially effective if we start using them as soon as we feel ourselves coming down with something before that virus starts spreading throughout our cells. And strong. Mm -hmm. So they're always going to make a difference. They're always going to help us. They're always going to support us. But the sooner the better to get a handle on some of those viruses. They, there's many of them that are antibacterial as well. There's many that are antibiotic. And um, many oils. So one oil isn't just an antibiotic. It could be antibiotic and antifungal. Um, they, they have many different properties because they're made up of so many different chemical compounds. So how do we know what to buy? How do we know which brand of oils to buy? And I'll explain why we use doTERRA, why the office uses doTERRA. In the industry, there's four grades. The big blue outer circle is synthetic. That's just, it's, it's created in the lab. It's synthetic. It maybe smells nice, but it to give you any of those benefits that we talked about and it might work against your body it might actually be bad for you um, food grade is allowed by the FDA to be ingested that's kind of like if you chewed some cinnamon gum for example then you've had a food grade essential oil but again not going to really benefit your body in the way that we're, we've been talking about Therapeutic grade is um, what you'll find at Whole Foods or maybe your local masseuse uses these. The struggle here is that there, there is no governing body regulating what goes into these essential oil bottles. And so people can virtually write whatever they want on their bottle. They can even call it 100% pure if there's only 3% essential oil in the bottle. So if there's only 3% pure essential oil in the bottle, what's the rest of the bottle made up of? Is it just a carrier oil? Oh, Is whatever. it something synthetic to make it smell better? So you really, really want to know your company. You want to trust your company. You know, want to know what you're getting. So here's some reasons why we use doTERRA. Um, they are third-party tested, meaning 
they don't just say, look how pure our oil is and expect you to trust them. They are third party tested with multiple, multiple tests and those tests are posted online on a website called source to you So you can actually go plug in the VIN number of your bottle, which usually is written on the bottom of your bottle into the source to you website and see all the tests that were done on your batch of oils. You can see their purity and their potency. They are, we call them beyond organic. So apparently, I just learned this, even with the EPA organic standard, there's still about 10 to 20 percent allowance for things like pesticides or herbicides. doTERRA's oils allow zero of those things. Zero fillers, zero pesticides, zero foreign contaminants. So in that way they are beyond organic. And they're also grown and harvested in their natural habitat. So when I lived in Colorado, there were not palm trees. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Why not? Because the climate there and the snow was just gonna it was just gonna kill them off, right? So certain better in certain regions. Lavender go grows amazingly well in France and um, frankincense grows in Oman and um, Melaleuca grows well in Australia. And so what doTERRA has done is they've gone in and they've actually partnered with small farmers there. So instead of just going and buying these farms outright, they go and they partner with farmers who have been um, sourcing these oils for generations. This is their, their family farm that their grandfathers and their great grandfathers have owned. And doTERRA goes and supports them and pays them fair wages. A lot of times previous to doTERRA they were, they were paid unfairly or there were middlemen or pirates where they were getting cheated. So doTERRA goes in and um, starts paying them fair wages and starts um, blessing whole communities by building wells and by building schools. Sometimes these oils are sourced in third world countries where they don't have some of those modern conveniences that we have. And when they start partnerships with doTERRA, doTERRA goes above and beyond to really bless them. And so that's, those are a few reasons why I love them as a company for their humanitarian efforts, but also why their oils are really above and beyond anything else that you can actually find out there. How can they make sure that there's no pesti pesticides because I mean, stuff's in the dirt and in the air and everything, so I mean, it blows over no matter what. Well, a lot of the places where they're, where they're sourced are quite far from where you would find uh -huh. pesticides and herbicides and things like that. And they also just, they test them to make sure. And they work, they, test them, yeah. they work hand in hand with the farmers. Do they have a way to remove that stuff if it's in there? If they don't, I'm not sure about that, but I know if it doesn't meet their standard, no. they don't sell it. Okay. That's just all there is to it. They won't sell it. Okay, thank you. All right, we talked about this already. Okay, let's get to some fun stuff. There are some ways to use the essential oils. Aromatic. I would like, would you mind doing this, Beth? Beth is going to go around, and if you would like, she's going to put a drop of wild orange in your hands. After she puts it in your hands, rub it together like this, and cup it over your mouth, and just inhale for a few moments. And then give me your feedback on that. <clears throat> so when we use an oil aromatically, this is one way. We've got diffusers right here and we can diffuse the oil into the air and we can breathe it in. And here's how that impacts us. It's like it used to smell like the sunshine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. So that was a memory being triggered probably, right? So when we smell an oil, it impacts the limbic system in our brain, which is tied to long-term memory. So remind me of your name? Loretta. Loretta just smelled the oranges, and she was reminded of a memory. Rose Drive. Oh, yeah. Of Rose Drive, when it used to smell like this. <laughs> so when we smell no, an oil, remember that too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. we make connections with long-term memory. We impact our mood. The oil actually is allowed into our brain, and it impacts our brain chemistry, which impacts our mood. So it's not just 
psychosomatic. Um, it actually has a chemical response that can impact our mood. It opens our airways. So um, when, we, when we breathe in, especially like a peppermint oil or a eucalyptus or a rosemary, it's going to open our airways, allow us to take in more oxygen. And it can um, kill things in the air that we don't want to be in the air. So when Dr. Singer is diffusing the oils in the office, it's going to help boost the immune system of the people that are breathing it in, as well as kill stuff that people might bring in with them that we wouldn't want to be hanging around. Topical use. This is going to be great for things that are sore, things that are cut, things that are bruised, things that are stiff. Um, we can put right on that area. Something like um, we have a what's called deep blue rub, mm -hmm. and that's great for um, stiffness and soreness and muscle aches and pre or post workout. But we can also use an oil to impact different things, different body systems inside. And we can do that by putting the oil on the back of the, our neck or on the bottoms of our feet. And when I talked about diluting that oregano that I used on my daughter, um, we can use just coconut oil that you get from Whole Foods. Or doTERRA sells what's called fractionated coconut oil, which we will work with in a few minutes when we make our roller bottles. But it just stays liquid. And what that does is it helps sort of contain the oil a little bit. So part of the oil you just smelled went into the air. So when we dilute it with a carrier oil, a vegetable oil, we help to contain the essential oil. And when it's on our skin, it absorbs a little bit more slowly. But it doesn't decrease the impact of the essential oil at all. It actually allows more of the essential oil to get into our bloodstream and into our and the oil will get into our bloodstream in about 30 seconds, and it will get to every cell in our body in about 30 minutes. So let me show you a really cool non-compliant slide. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, FDA. OK. <laughs> Let's see. OK. If someone is super science -y, maybe they could tell me what field microscopy is, but we're just, we're assuming that we are looking at blood under a microscope. So a sample was taken from a patient of their blood. They had what was very scientifically known as sticky blood, right? That's not the science name, I'm just mm -hmm. kidding. <laughs> they call it sticky blood. I think they do, yeah. yeah. But you can see this. Or Ray Lou. Thank you, yeah. Ray Lou. So this blood's all kind of not flowing very well. And they used a drop of balance oil on the bottoms of this patient's feet. And then they took another blood sample about 30 seconds or so later. And look at these blood cells now. They are flowing well. And I believe it's because of the frankincense in the oil. Frankincense does have a blood thinning effect. That's my favorite. Now, um, unlike a synthetic drug, it's not going to force your blood to thin. But if your blood needed support in thinning, again, your body knows what to do with the essential oil. And it will prioritize how to use the essential oil to what your body needs. And so this person, that's what they needed. And the background is gray, dark. That's why they call it dark field. And those are illuminated in a light white. OK. You can reverse it depending on what the doctors want to look at. Awesome. You could do white in the back and dark in the Whoa. front. Nice. OK. So that's for you. <laughs> Thank you. I knew we invited her for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> I learned something today. <laughs> OK. Internal, I can only recommend for doTERRA because I believe in their purity. And I tell you to drink an oil, and then you're calling me on the phone, and you're mad. Um, so we really want to make sure if we're going to use something internally that it's incredibly pure, and doTERRA is. So there's a couple ways to do this. We could just put it under the tongue, which would help it get into the bloodstream. We could drink it in water. I love to do the wild orange that you guys experienced, or lemon, or another citrus in water. Um, and then when we drink it, it's going to help support the whole digestive system on the way down. 
or we could take it in a, in a capsule. If we take it in a capsule, then it's going to start in the, inti in the intestines and the stomach and work its way out from there. So um, targeted support, some oils that I would use internally would be like digestive health oils. Um, we have one called Digestsen that's great for all tummy issues. Um, or I might do something to help boost my immune system. Or I might um, use an antibiotic oil if I need some sort of support with my gut health. So those are some ways that we use internal. And that's kind of up to you if you want to use internal or not. Um, but again, we want to make sure the oils are safe if we're going to use them internally and not just <coughs> use any old oil. OK. So if you want to grab your handout and open it up and look at this left side, the before side. This is kind of the maybe the standard medicine cabinet. This cabinet costs, if you added up all those um, medicines and over-the-counter drugs, costs over $800. So if you would take a minute and maybe circle some of the things that you've used before. Just circle it, and if anyone's willing to share in just a moment, I'm going to ask you <laughs> if you could share some of the things you've used before. <laughs> How are we doing on time? Thirty minutes. Okay. So, someone give me a specific one that maybe they they've used a lot. Okay, and what would you? What number is that? Two. Number three. Three. Okay. So autoimmune disorders, joint pain and swelling, parasites, maybe um, headaches, maybe. Okay. So we can use something like, um, I'm going to use three and four as an example. Turmeric or copaiba oil instead. So these are anti-inflammatory oils. Um, copaiba helps with pain and it helps with stress. So it's, it's very calming. It works um, on the CB2 receptors of the brain, which is linked with um, calming p pain and calming stress. And turmeric is great for inflammation. Mm -hmm. What else? What else have we used before? How about nine? Nine halls. All right. <laughs> so cold and flu, congestion, allergies, and asthma. So let me show you guys two oils, and I'll even pass these ones around. Breathe is our respiratory blend. Um, if you'd like to, I'll pass this one around. You're welcome to rub it in your hands and cup it over your mouth and feel your lungs opening up. No pressure. You can also just smell from the bottle. I'll let you pass it around. What's the name on that one? Breathe. Breathe, yeah. mm -hmm. This is our respiratory support blend. It's okay to mix them. Totally fine to mix them. Yes. You'll feel your lungs opening up, getting a little bit more oxygen, helping um, calm that cough. You can diffuse it. Anytime my girls have cough or the sniffles at home, we are di um, diffusing this oh, oil. I'm sorry. So diffusing is a way we use it aromatically. You've seen Dr. Singer use it in the front in a diffuser. Um, we only need about six drops in the diffuser. How many do you guys do? Five? Uh, we, use, we use three to four of each one. Okay. We put two in. Okay, so about three to four, six to eight drops. Right? So your eyes might even water a little bit. You can feel yourself taking in more oxygen, sort of energizing. I had to use it this week. Michael had a little cold, so we started to use it. Right. And Mel was going on. Nice. <laughs> What's that? Yep, I'm about to pass that one around too. This is not a good one. So this is just great for respiratory support, cough, sniffles, um, even snoring, I've heard. Some people really benefit with this one with snoring. Oh, my husband could use that. And then we have an immune-boosting blend. And this one is 
there's a story behind this one. This one's called On Guard. Um, and it's also been known as thieves oil. The recipe has been around for a long, long time. The story behind this is that perfumers in Europe used this during the plague. And they were the only ones that weren't dying of the plague because of this blend. So this, this recipe for this blend has been around for hundreds of years. And it supports um, crossing into that cell and dealing with the threats that are inside the, the cell before they multiply. So I'll pass around on guard. I wouldn't put this one in your hands, just smell it from the bottle. It can be a little spicy because of the cinnamon and the clove. Um, my husband uses this one under his tongue. And it's very spicy, but it's wonderful. Just a drop under the tongue? Mm-hmm. It's very spicy. <laughs> you might not want a whole drop. <laughs> you could, yeah, you can go like this. Water, drink water about 10 seconds. Like yeah, that. Okay. and then just put that. So if you if you put your finger over the top, it, you'll get less than a drop. And then you can kind of swipe that or the, or the roof of your mouth and get a little bit less. That one's good if you're starting to feel like you're getting sick. Right, exactly. Could I ask you a question about, mm -hmm. this about the company? Okay. Um, do they encourage you to learn the mixtures of the, the oils for different things? Because I know they have a lot of things that are already mixed. Mm -hmm. And I, it's really, I really feel interested in like... Blending your own? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of resources mm -hmm. yeah. for blending your own. Yeah. And... It started, there are books. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. Know about a book I got that I've been using. Mm. Okay, good. Yeah, there's plenty of single oils, but for some people they would want to blend their own. Yeah. For some people, mm. they've got too many kids to blend their own. They just need a lot of oil. We got nothing but time. <laughs> you know, we're retired. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, I do. I it's do. Fun. Yeah. It's fun. Fun. Someday, when my kids are in college, I'll be <laughs> blending oil. <laughs> Okay. Could be that funny old lady sitting in the room. <laughs> 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 yeah, scientists, my yeah. patients. Right, exactly. <laughs> Two of you together. So what else? What else have we? What what other numbers? Twenty nine. Twenty nine. Okay. Indigestion, constipation, diarrhea, heartburn, food poisoning, nausea, emotion sickness. So this is going to be our digestive blend. It's called Digest Zen. So if you go to the grocery store, let's say for an over-the-counter remedy, you kind of have to be specific for your over-the-counter remedy, right? If you're bloated, you're going to do this one. And if you're constipated, you're going to do this one. And, and, and there's so many different options. This basically encompasses everything. So it's going to support the digestive system however it needs to be supported. Does anyone want to smell this one? Yeah, I would. Okay. Me too. I have a friend that swears by this oil. <laughs> yep. It's not a perfume. You won't be using this one as a perfume. But here's how you use it. You either put a drop in water and drink it to get into the digestive system. Mm -hmm. Or you can use it topically. Who's, who asked about this one? Okay. You can put it in a roller bottle and oil and rub it around. And then if you need to, yeah, repeat it in yeah. 20 minutes. What about, like, is that good for acid reflux? Yes. I would probably drink it in water or maybe use it topically over the throat for acid reflux. Does that work for lotion sickness, too? Yes. So for that, I would probably just smell it. Sorry. It's not that fun. But for the with the ginger, you can kind of just smell it. Is it the, uh, anise? Is that what's in there that makes that smell? Um, I think different noses would pick up different oils in it. Because you know, there's um, licorice is really bad for you if you have high blood pressure. Okay. So I think that probably we need. That's why we need to be aware of these things. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good to know. In things. That's. Yeah. I did not know about that. Well, now you do. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, any other ones that we want to cover? I want to make sure I we have time for... I this one, the tenactin, the ones for fungus. Okay, what number is that? Number, oh, number 14, 13. Number 14 number. or 13, let me see. Is that group? Okay, so that's probably going to be Melaleuca. Let me look. Okay. 14, 
Yeah, it's going to be 13. So dandruff, earaches, athlete's foot, yeah. canker sores, or cold sores. Maluka. Its common name is tea tree oil. It has those antifungal properties. You can put it on your skin diluted or undiluted. It's one of those very gentle ones that you could use what's called neat. Just put it straight on there. Um, it has a little bit of a numbing to it, like I've used it internally for a canker sore before. It kind of has a numbing property. It kind of tastes, it's, it smells and tastes fairly medicinal. Do you want to give it a smell? But obviously if you dilute it, it's going to cover more area. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't smell good. Right. But it's not going to stay. It doesn't smell It's not going to stay on you all day. No. You know, it's, you'll smell it for a little bit and then it'll dissipate. It's mm -hmm. good. You can smell the, the active ingredients. <laughs> so let me go over a couple of other oils that we haven't gone over. Lemon, this is one of my absolute favorites, so I will pass it around because it smells incredible. It's doTERRA's best-selling best oil. It's very uplifting for the mood. It's kind of, um, citrus oils have like an energy, an energizing property to them. Um, it just makes you feel a little bit more cheerful when you smell a citrus oil. Mm -hmm. And they also have like a gentle um, detoxification effect on the body. So which one is this? Oh, Luca. So lemon helps your body get rid of um, phytochemicals. Um, very safely, it can kind of dissolve these phytochemicals in your body. It can help your body to safely release toxins. Um, when I say detox, I don't mean, it's not this powerful thing where you're going to be running to the bathroom every 30 minutes or something. It's just a very gentle way to cleanse so yourself. how would you put that one? I personally would drink that one in water. Mm -hmm. so but you, mm -hmm. in a one drop? You, well, I usually say one and then two comes back, two come out because it's, it pours really yeah, fast, but yeah, one. Mm -hmm. um, maybe two or three times a day, okay. just add it to your water. Um, you don't want to use it in like the standard plastic water bottles that you get from the store because it actually eats through plastic, okay. which is good in our bodies. We want it to get rid of that junk in our bodies, but we don't want to be drinking extra plastic. Yeah. So use um, stainless steel or use glass if you're going to add essential oils into your water. Did you say, and you said phytochemicals or phytochemicals? Phyto. 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 P-H. P -H. P -H. Yeah. Whatever it is. Okay. Um, I just heard a story about a gal who struggled with constipation her whole life and she was only 30 years old and the only thing she did was she started drinking water this lemon essential oil in her water yeah, and, I ran and I should have known that quite a few years ago <laughs> i was plagued with that i think the man yeah. was born oh no yeah so sometimes our body is just holding on to those yeah. toxic things and it doesn't want to release them because it doesn't want to release them back into our bloodstream so something like lemon oil can come along and assist the body in releasing things yeah. safely. Frankincense, one of my absolute favorite oils. And let's see, that would be number 20. So has anyone used? <laughs> Ooh, adrenal stress and unisom. Hmm. OK. Well, frankincense is one that I consider almost like a supplementational oil <coughs> because what it does is it helps unhealthy cells to go to their death. What is that called? A apoptosis. With a P or a C? Apoptosis. Apoptosis. So we want our unhealthy cells to die. We don't want them to replicate. We know what that causes. Right. We want them to die. And so frankincense is going to support our bodies on, this, on a cellular level. It's going to support healthy cells. So using this oil, a drop under your tongue twice a day, is just going to help truly support your body um, down to the cellular level. And we went over a lot of these. Oregano, like I said, is, has antibiotic properties. Lavender is going to be calming um, for stress, calming to help us sleep better, and calming on things on the skin. So if we have a cut, per se, if I get cut or my children 
more likely my children get cut. I'm usually doing lavender and melaleuca together. Lavender to kind of calm the pain and um, calm some of the anxiety that you know you get when you have a scratch. And then melaleuca has that cleansing effect. So does anyone want to smell the lavender? Can I pass that one around? Would that be for like bruises too? I would use it on bruises. Um, maybe frankincense as well. Either one would be great for bruises. Yeah, it's going to have that calming effect and for pain. What about this kind where, you know, you get when you get old? Is there something that we could use to make that go away faster? Um, let's look it up in the book okay. after the class. Okay. Yeah. So I think now what we should do is um, let me talk, let me ask Dr. Singer. Do you want me to talk about how to get the oils into our home, or do we want to start making our roller bottles? Um, well, I can start make, passing them let's out. Let's make it interactive. Okay. I can okay. start passing them out, and then you can talk about that. Okay, that sounds great. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we are going to make a roller bottle. So this is going to be a diluted blend that we can use topically. We are going to use lemon, lavender, and peppermint. So we are going to have lavender for its calming properties, peppermint for its cooling and respiratory and digestive properties. So we've got a lot going on with peppermint. Peppermint is great for so many different things and lemon for the cleansing properties. Now this blend is especially great for allergies. So this, we, we call it even an allergy bomb. Sometimes people add melaleuca to it. Um, you could use it for a headache. So you could just roll it right across your forehead for a headache, it's gonna have a cooling effect. Please don't touch your eyes after you do that. If you have sore muscles, go ahead and roll it on your muscles. Could that help for somebody with asthma? It could. Um, my, my cousin's children have asthma, and she uses Breathe for them. Breathe. Yes. Okay. So you, I think you could experiment with both mm -hmm. and see. Okay. Did I hear sinus? Yeah, I was just sinus. Sinus. Yeah. sinus. Give it a try, mm -hmm. because it's just like we, res we might respond differently to different pharmaceutical drugs, each of us is going to respond differently to different essential oils. So I would just experiment with both this and with Breathe, and then just see which one works better for you. Um, you can put it across the bridge of your nose, but again, just try not to touch your eyes. Your eyes will water. It won't be the end of the world. You won't go blind. I've learned that. <laughs> Don't do it while driving. <laughs> um, if ever an oil gets on you and it feels hot, and we call them hot oils. Um, water will make it worse. Water will drive it in. So that's why we do dilute with a vegetable oil. So let's get started with this. If you could go around. So what we need, everyone needs a roller bottle. Let me set this down. A lid and the actual roller itself. So you do this. And I'll get and I'll, I can just pass these around actually. I have a question: How do you know where to apply it on your body? They see you there, and you go on Facebook and say, "Oh, well, I or use this one yeah. down my spine, mm -hmm. and this I put it on my arm." It's like, how do you know where you're supposed to put it? Is there a rule of thumb? Well. If it's an issue that's like clearly, here's the issue, it's my sore muscle. Mm -hmm. Put it on your sore muscle. Okay. If it's like, I want to address my liver or my blood, then the bottoms of the feet is a great place to put it. Your bottom, the bottoms of your feet will just drink in the oil. Um, the spine works well too, to get it quickly into the body and into the bloodstream. Um, and then sometimes people like to put them on like their pu their pulse points, sort of where you might put a perfume. So where the oil would maybe warm up a little bit and sort of, you could smell it like, let's say you're using an oil for emotional benefits and you really like how it smells. 
and I would keep it somewhere close by so, so that I could smell it throughout the day or maybe here so that it's kind of going up and you can just again experiment some of this is experimentation to see what works for you what is your favorite resource for people that are trying to get into experimenting with different oils I would go to the where to put it in and stuff like that the doTERRA website is huge it has many um, many different blogs within it. So there's like a science blog and there's um, like different videos that you can watch. Um, but also just a, a book like this one. Modern Essentials is a great book for just getting started. And um, this has, um, it has all the single oils, it has all the blends, but then you can look up ailments. So you can look up, bronchitis and find out which oils are good for that okay. mm -hmm. um, and then it has different recipes in the back and just different things like that so there's plenty of books out there but I really like this one there's also apps right there are a few apps yeah. true the EO app, the EO app. What's it, what is it do you know do you know the name of it off the top I of your head EO -E essentials I have it right on okay so just depending on how you like to learn, um, I tend to watch videos, that's kind of my thing. Mm -hmm. But if you're an audio learner, or if you like to learn through yeah, reading. Old okay. school. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. right, okay, so. Yeah. Okay. EO eBooks. EO eBooks. Does everybody have? And it's a one-time fee of like, I think, seven or eight dollars, and that's it. Nice. Oh, yeah. Okay. Does everyone have a roller bottle, a roller, and a lid? Okay. Awesome. So let's get started with peppermint. Okay. So I'm going to pass around the peppermint. What you're going to do, I need to, I'll make one too so that I can show you. You're going to put 10 drops of your essential oil into your roller. So you're going to kind of aim. It'll start coming out pretty quickly and count fast. One, two, three. Oh, not as fast as I thought. Eight, nine, ten. Okay? I just Fairly simple. Count the number and it's hard to see the drops. And then pass it on to the next person. And you said peppermint was the bottle for your feet. Oh peppermint is going to be respiratory system, respiratory. headaches, um, muscle tension, and digestive system. Now, if I send out more oils than. Uh, can drop stone. I can I'll do it. Okay. Yeah. We're going to have three oils going. Oh, yeah, so try to remember what you put in your bottle. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, okay. What oils Sounds good. do you recommend for carrier oils? Um, I use fractionated coconut oil the most because it doesn't have its own scent. Mm -hmm. And so you only get the scent of the essential oils. Yeah. But you can really use any carrier oil that you'd like to. Um, if you like the smell of like jojoba, let's say, or almond oil, those are fine. Oh, okay. So it doesn't um, really matter. It doesn't really matter unless you're trying to not compete with the scent of your essential oil. Okay. Right. So some of the blends that I really, really love that I use more for like a perfume, let's say, I wouldn't want to have another scent mixed yeah. into them. Okay. Which one do you want next? Lavender or peppermint? Um, we did peppermint, right? Oh, so so let's go with um, lemon. The coconut oil, does it smell like coconut then? Yes. Not the fractionated. The okay. fractionated does not. What about palm, yes. palm yes. oil? Maybe that's not oil, is it? Yeah, um, um, I think if you go to if you go to like Sprouts, anything you'd find in their um, what is that section of the store called? Okay. The beauty product yeah. 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 I know type right section. Yeah. And make sure it's a high quality one. Obviously, you don't want to destroy your, I mean, you wouldn't destroy the essential oils, but obviously, if you want the, the, the girl something healthy. That anything in the, this is just a little piece of information that the one company, that now company, mm -hmm. that's it's all different. just Not yet. Okay. the smell. Synthetic? Basically. Yeah. But the other ones, most of them are therapeutic. Okay. So, don't forget we learned about therapeutic, though. Yeah. The standard right. is 
un it, uncertain. I'd say it's better than now. <laughs> right, don't use now, everyone. You heard, you heard it from the horse's mouth. Don't you know, use now. Okay, and then are we ready for lavender? So we're doing 10 drops of each. And that can go from lemon and peppermint. We're mixing all three together. Mm -hmm. We're mixing all three together. 10 drops as well. There you go. All right, so what was this, peppermint? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I have glasses on. Okay. <laughs> let, let me show you the, the hard part now. So everybody look up here for just a second. This is our carrier oil. This is doTERRA's fractionated coconut oil. It will not smell like coconut. It won't have a scent. It's a little tricky. So we're just going to turn this bottle all the way upside down on top of our roller and we're going to give it a couple squeezes. I say, okay. you need to tell the company we need a funnel like you do for your oil in your car. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think they, the yeah, I think those are. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I just did a, some gentle pressure to squeeze it in. Are you ready? Okay. <laughs> oh, well, she still has to put her other two oils Yeah. Okay. Um, have you ever suggested it, Liz? What's or that? Like that? You know, I think some of the um, third-party companies that sell, like, supplies, I think they have these little pipettes that might work. I think they probably sell funnels. Yeah, I have a little oh, tiny funnel that I got with some kind of cosmetics once. Oh, yeah, you and I've it forever. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hers isn't all the way up. Okay. Yeah. And then... And your next step is you're going to take your roller and you're just going to shove it in there. And it kind of makes a little popping. Um, it doesn't make a popping oh, sound. Oh, dear really. Don, I spilled your stuff. <laughs> it's on me. Yeah, that's, that's one to be careful with. Because like, if it gets, you can squeeze out of your hand. And what is that one? Say that again. That's oh, slippery. Yeah, we'll just say, oh, okay. When you push that yeah. in there, I've had it where it's like, the whole oh, thing just falls all over the place. So. Okay. And I have actually. Are you done with your you know what would be a better way? I'm going to get a, a tip that goes to a point. Mm -hmm. We're not done with this. Oh, okay. So, where are we at with our? We have a couple people still making the oils. So, do you need more oils in there? Yeah. You need more oils. Okay. Let me have that and I'll add some oils in there. This is very hard to do. Okay, so while we're kind of doing this, do we have any more ailments that we want to talk about? I know I had you write down three things at the beginning of the class. Major arthritis. Mm -hmm. Done. Okay, so I would probably. I tried my cup of here. Okay. Eh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> have you tried some topical things like? Peppermint or deep blue? I haven't tried the peppermint. I didn't realize that that wouldn't work. For okay. For pain. Um, peppermint might help with the pain. Deep blue. Yeah, um, what kind of copaiba did you idea. use? Uh -huh. You said you used copaiba. I haven't heard You. Which one did you say that you used? Oh, is it co yeah. <laughs> copa? Yeah. C O P A I. A I B. Yeah, okay. How did you use it? I, I literally got, just put it right on. What brand was it? It's the uh, Young Living, let me see this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Young okay. Living Essential Oil. So, I can't recommend that for, I can recommend our Copaiba under the tongue. Mm -hmm. I, I, can't, I don't know if I can recommend Young Living's under the tongue, but I could recommend ours under the tongue. Two drops under the tongue. Okay. And then, what about um, uh, like a f like a food based support, like some like collagen type supplements? I think is what I would recommend. I can't squeeze it. I'll help. <laughs> yeah, that's, the that's my problem. Make sure you're allowed to reach and out. It's number. So just go up and down a little. Yeah. Four. Number four. Number four. four. Yeah. Yeah. Very stiff. But I think some um, some food that has um, collagen boosting properties would also be helpful. Okay. So you can get like bone broth collagen. 
Um, I know you can get lot, there's lots of collagen supplements, but I really like bone broth collagen. Or if you make your own bone broth at home, that can be really helpful with joints. Okay. So I would do. Costco sells bone broth. Uh -huh. Okay. Well, it's cheaper to make on your own. I have yeah. I have noticed that. Okay. Um, but it, it is. Well, it's expensive to buy. Right. It's really expensive to buy. Uh -huh. So I, what I do is I go to Whole Foods. I get chicken feet. I know. Oh, that's what I see. Yep. Chicken feet. <laughs> No, yep. chicken feet that's too. me. I'm the one buying it. And the chicken, <laughs> and the chicken backs and necks. And then you, with some water and some apple cider vinegar mm -hmm. for about 24 hours, you just um, put it in the crock pot. Water and, and vinegar? Basically? Just a little bit of apple cider vinegar will pull out some of the stuff out of the bones that you yeah, want. Chicken feet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, for the gelatin. The and, and then do you put it in the freezer or anything? Or do you just it depends on how much I, I end up making. Sometimes I'll divide it and put half in the fridge, half in the freezer, uh -huh. if I have a lot. Yeah. And then you can add it to soups, you can add it to stews, you, you can put it over your chicken, you can just drink it. How do you know when you cook to that? Um, generally, I do 24 hours. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I think it's minimum of probably 12, maximum of 48. Uh -huh. So I usually start on high, and then um, once it starts simmering, you can go to medium. Uh-huh. Interesting because cool. I've been buying that. Oh, yeah. Okay. So I'm getting signals from Dr. Singer that it's time to wrap up. Okay. So let me transition. If there's anyone, this is there's zero pressure to buy anything. But if some of you are in the room and, they, and you want to get these oils into your home, I'm just going to tell you how. Basically, with doTERRA, you can pay $35 to get a membership and you can get all the oils at a discounted price of 25% off. Or you can buy them retail anytime at your local chiropractor's office. <laughs> Um, or you can also buy a kit. If you buy a kit, it comes with a membership. And we have kits that have um, most of the oils that we talked about tonight, the top 10 oils. We have them in small bottles, or we have them in big bottles with a diffuser. And we have some bigger kits as well. So if that's something you're interested in, just come talk to me in the next few minutes, or grab one of these and take it home, or Dr. Stinger will be here. Some of the kits have yeah, diffusers so attached to them right. as yeah. part of the the uh, package. That's what I got to start. Yes, which is yeah. wonderful because you want to start making your house smell wonderful. Okay, I have two questions. Okay. Oh, no, well, what I was interested in is I've always had issues, uh, you know, I think I was born with asthma. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but something to help the breathing at night, so yes. I'm coughing all night and sleeping better. Okay. Is that a diffuser? No. Breathe in the diffuser. Mm -hmm. okay. You'd want to do the breathe oil in your diffuser. Okay. Yes. And is there any of these essential oils that are good for like, um, like mental clarity, so you're calming down a yes. bit and kind of clearing your head? Frankincense is amazing for that. Okay. As is balance. I'll quickly let you smell that. And maybe we'll wrap up in general and then you guys can come up individually to talk to me. Okay, this is the balance. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and then we have a blend called In Tune, which I, I don't have with me. And as I was saying, I, got it. I, this is, I swear by this book because all of the things that you're oh, asking, well, what about this, what about this? That's my go-to. Everything right. you ask me is right there. What I do is I just go right to it. Uh, digestion, it'll tell you right there. It'll give you the blends. It'll tell you what to do. Right. So I definitely don't. Book. Right. I definitely don't know everything, and so a lot of times I'm just looking at my reference book to see what would be good. If you want it on your phone, that EOE book does the same thing. You just mm. put what you. Whatever your question is, you know, like the consultation, you'll put that on there and it'll pop up and tell you what, and it tells the different colors. There's three different colors, and the top one is the, the most uh, effective. Yeah, mm -hmm. effective, and then it goes down to the next one and the next one. Okay, so. EOE books. Okay. But make sure you get the one that has the two different leaves on them. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. So just to wrap us up and end us up, 
do you, we believe that there are natural things out there that can maybe help support us mm -hmm. without side effects. Yeah. And we can actually save, this one's around a little over 800. Not this one, but the one in your book is around, if you got every single thing, I believe it was around 500. So we're actually saving a lot of money in the long term. Essential oils don't expire like some of these products do. If we treat ex essential oils well, they most of them will outlive us. That's how incredible they are. So keep them in the dark, in the... Yeah, not in the not sun. Not in the refrigerator? Just um, not in the refrigerator. Okay. Just not in the sun and um, not in like a really hot car for days on end. Okay. No, what, what's yeah. this good for? What's this good for? Okay, so you've got your roller bottle. Grab a sticker. Grab a blank sticker and put it on top. You can choose whatever color you want. This is going to be great for a headache. This is going to be great for cooling off your muscles if you want to um, take it home and massage it on your person that you love or make them do it to you. <laughs> um, this is going to be great for... Um, putting on your chest before you go to sleep to kind of open up the airways and the lavender is going to be calming and um, this is great for allergies if you have allergies put it on your chest or kind of rub it right here so just experiment with it and report back to Dr. Singer with how you liked it and we also have that blend oh yeah right here thank you mm -hmm. if you guys are interested so thank you so much. We'll wrap up the group portion and the class portion, but I'll be here for questions. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you Dr. Singer.